Hey cats, what's happening? <clears throat> I'm trying to get some things wrapped up around here today. My brother is flying in tonight, late tonight, so I want to have, have everything kind of prepared for him. I didn't blow leaves, but I I got some of them off of my walkway here because, you know, they get all tracked in the house when I go back and forth from the garage here. But anyway, I had a sto good story or two for you. Yesterday, <clears throat> I was had, had been invited to my employee's retirement luncheon. And, you know, as you guys know, I, I had a long time career with the park system in the neighboring county around Akron, Ohio. The big park system, and uh, it kind of adjoins right up to the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, of which I worked in some of those areas myself too. But anyway, they had the uh, re their employees reunion yesterday, uh, it was a luncheon, and then they put on like a slideshow presentation and show you like what some of their future plans are, what they're working on right now. And, uh, you know, just each department head kind of stands up there for a minute or two and just kind of explains what's going on. So it's kind of a time where we can update and kind of hear what's going on with the parks. Now, not all the guys show up for that. It's usually just a handful of people that might have interest in something like that. And I went and it was fun meeting some of the old timers that I used to work with. And the question came up about some of the characters. Now, you know, I started with the park system in 1973. And that was a long time ago. And when I walked into the shop for the first time, you know, I was just a kid. I was probably 18, 19 years old at the time. And here was a crew in there of, of older gentlemen, probably between 30, 40 year old men, some of them maybe older, 50, even 60. And most, almost all these guys were highly uneducated, just laborers. And I think I was one of the few that actually graduated high school. So, that was kind of strange, but there was one fellow there in particular. He went by the name of Leroy, and Leroy was uh, a strapping guy, probably in his uh, late 30s, maybe 40. Strong as an ox, though. Uh, and I guess if I could explain him anyway... Uh, he, he kind of reminded me of Jack Nicholson in The Shining. You know, he had that, that high forehead, and he kind of, something was a little off in his speech, and he, he had no education whatsoever. But he worked like a dog. He was strong as a bull, and whatever they told him to do, he'd jump into it head first and, and just work circles around everybody. Well, wouldn't you know it, I got assigned to work with this guy. And uh, we, we took the truck back then. We had like uh, Ford F-150s with the three on the tree, three speed and the clutch. Leroy dro drove and w we had to cut a tree down that was leaning uh, towards some outhouses in kind of a remote area. So we drove around there, we got there, he took a chainsaw, we had a great big honking home light chainsaw, and of course I wasn't allowed to run the chainsaw at that point, I was just a, a wet behind the ears kid. So he took the saw and he told me to bring some other tools, an axe and, and you know, whatever we would need. And we hiked down to where these outhouses were, there was a men's and a women's, and they were probably about 10 feet apart. Well, there was this cherry tree, and it was probably about a 30, 40 foot tree, and it was dead. Uh, and it wasn't really leaning too bad, but I guess their fear was that it would fall on the outhouses, and they didn't want that, so they wanted us to cut that thing down and just drag it off into the woods or, or throw the, the logs into the woods. 
So being that Leroy had the chainsaw and was going to do the cutting, he turned to me and he said, well, how do you think we should cut this thing down? I said, well, I'd hate to hit those restrooms. I said, let's do it safe. And I said, I'll throw a rope up in that tree and tie it off and I'll pull it and you can cut it and it'll fall out here in the open. Well, he studied it. He walked around there scratching his head and he said, ah, I don't want to waste my time with a rope. I, let's just cut it down. I said, well, how are you going to do that? He said, well, I'm going to drop it right between those two outhouses. And I said, oh, gee, I said, you got like a 10-foot window there to drop that thing. If you are just a little bit off to the left or the right, you're going to take one of those roofs off. And uh, then we'll be in trouble because that was what we were told, don't damage the outhouses. I said, just let me throw a rope up there and we'll pull it back. And he said, no, nah, I don't want to put a rope in it. So he looked at it some more, he walked around it some more, and then he looked at me and said, come on, what do you think we should do? I said, dude, I already told you what we should do. And I said, you know, but if you're going to cut it without putting a rope in it, then I'm out of here because I'm going to go back to the truck and you just tell me when you get it cut down because I don't want to be anywhere around there when it hits the bathroom. Well, that irritated Leroy. First thing he did was pick up the axe and he came after me. <clears throat> He came running after me. He says, I'm going to chop your damn head off with this axe. And I ran as fast as I could. I don't think I ever ran faster before in my life. Whether he would have done it or not, I don't know. But he had a temper on him like a, a tornado. And he was coming after me. And he chased me halfway up that field before I got back to the truck. And I could hear him screaming at the top of his lungs. Scared me to death. I thought he was going to kill me. Well, he went back down over the hill, and I heard the chainsaw run for a while, and then it was quiet, and after, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so, I kind of crept back over there, and I <laughs> could see that he had dropped the tree right between those two outhouses and had it all cut up, so I went down there and helped him drag the brush away, and then he was okay. He, of course, after he would have a temper tantrum like that, he always apologized, so he, he would always tell me, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I just got real mad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. So yeah, he was a firecracker, ready to explode. You had to, you had to really walk softly around him when you worked with him. I didn't usually have any other problems with him after that because I kind of knew what my boundaries were and I knew what upset him, but I watched him get pretty angry with some other guys. I watched him throw a great big honking pipe wrench across the shop at the boss and it, it hit the wall, wham! And uh, Boy, good thing it didn't hit the boss because uh, it would have injured him pretty bad. What did the boss do? He just went back in his office and shut the door and said, to heck with that, I'm not going to deal with that. Let him calm down. And again, Leroy went in the office and said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. You know, he's like Sling Blade. You ever watch that movie, Sling Blade? That was Leroy. That was Leroy. He had a temper on him. Whew. Well, there was another young, uh, big, strapping black dude that worked with us, Arthur. And uh, he was strong as a bull, this guy. He came, had come up from Georgia. And he was a single young buck and got a job. He had no education. He couldn't uh, spell or write. Uh, <coughs> he could sign his name. That was about it. But Art, he was a good guy. He took a liking to me. He really liked me, and we were often put together working. <clears throat> he liked to show his strength though. He would he liked to pick me up and slam me down on the ground and sit on top of me and then he'd laugh his ass off because I was just a string bean. I I was just skinny little kid, you know, and he was this big strong 
I know it wasn't like being in prison, but it kind of reminded me of prison because some of these guys, although they were workmates, they were almost equal to cellmates, you know, like you didn't know who the heck you were dealing with there. Well, what we often commonly did was we'd go out for lunch. We'd get in somebody's car and we'd drive up a couple miles up the road. There was a Dairy Queen. We'd go to the Dairy Queen and we'd get a sandwich and some French fries or something for our lunch. A soda and bring it back. And we only had a half hour for lunch, so we had to move fast. But it was quick enough that, you know, that we could make it up and back easily and still have time to eat our sandwich. Well, the one, the one particular day, Arthur informed uh, me and the other fellow that he was going to drive. He had this yellow Monte Carlo with the uh, vinyl roof, the black vinyl roof, and, and it was a nice car. He had just bought it uh, not too long before, and he said, we're going to take my car. I said, all right, no problem. Well, I rode shotgun in the passenger seat, I better not call it show, play, riding shotgun until you hear the rest of this story. The other dude got in the back seat and Arthur was driving. Well, we barely made it a mile or two up the road when Arthur reached under the seat and pulled out a sawed-off shotgun. Now, he had gone to, like, Sears and bought a shotgun, and then he hacksawed the barrel off and he hacksawed the stock off, so it was just like a little, like, one-handed pistol thing. He pulled it out from under the seat, and he turns it over, and he sticks it right in my, in, in my side. And says, what you gonna do now, bitch? Well, of course, yeah, I about crapped my pants, but you know, you, you gotta keep your composure, and you can't show fear. And I was like, get that thing out of my face. And he's laughing, you know, he thinks it's funny. Well, he takes the gun, puts it in his left hand, and he's driving. And he leans out the window with this shot, sawed-off shotgun, and the, as the speed limit sign is coming up, wham! <laughs> he shoots the speed limit sign. Me and the other guy, we're like, you know, all wide-eyed. <coughs> like, what just happened here? <laughs> Should we be hanging out with this guy? Well, to make a long story short, he ended up shooting his girlfriend with that sawed-off shotgun. Now, it had quite a spray on it, and I'm not sure what he had in there, birdshot or something, but she wasn't mortally wounded or anything. She just had, let's say she had some shrapnel in her, some, some BBs, and he was arrested, of course, and hauled off to jail. And I don't remember ever seeing him again after that. Uh, I had heard rumors that as soon as he got out, he fl he took off and went down to uh, Georgia again, never to be seen or heard from again. So over my course of employment, yeah, I, I worked with a lot of colorful characters, and I have so many stories. Uh, I mean, I could, uh, I, I often said I could write a book of everything that happened there. Uh, <laughs> some incredible stories. But anyway, that was some of my conversation yesterday with some of the uh, ex-co-workers, the retirees at the Park Retirement Luncheon. Looks like rain again. This guy's getting pretty black over on the other side there, and it rained, poured down rain yesterday. Well, I get to pick up my brother from the airport tonight. Like I said, I've got some things to round up, some things to do, so I'm going to get busy here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed my stories for today. But uh, until next time, cats, I'll catch you all later.